So my name is Pete. I am uh, one of IPAM design directors. And here in Sofia, we've got a pretty huge design team. We've got 25 experienced designers here. And today we'd like to share with you some interesting facts. And uh, we are trying, we will share with you some knowledge of Figma. So, I'm sorry for it. Uh, we are really proud uh, about our people and we are proud uh, with our customers. But unfortunately, we can't share the names of our customers. But uh, this is like one of the biggest things working in the PAM. This is our customers. Uh, this is like the best thing that we could share uh, according to the end, our NDA. And you could imagine uh, what names behind this sign. Uh, the best thing that I like uh, that, for example, in uh, pharma domain, uh, we, we could share with the people officially, publicly, that uh, nine of the top ten pharma company is our client, with, without any names. <laughs> but, uh, so, why, uh, uh, why this uh, name is important for us? Because uh, uh, this uh, company, they expect, uh, this is like the best uh, world company, and they expect best service from our side. Uh, and in fact, this is like the various service. Uh, this is, <coughs> I'm kind of sure that uh, probably you heard about the PAM. I think everyone knows IPAM companies. Could you raise the hand? Nice, <laughs> like, thank you very much. Uh, so, but the thing that you don't know and uh, it's still not uh, so uh, well known inside our own company that uh, it's not the IT company anymore. Uh, this is not just developers, architects, uh, uh, and uh, there are so many different people like designers, uh, consultants, uh, and uh, any other roles uh, that we've got. So overall, we've got 60,000 people in the PAM, and uh, all 13,000 of them, uh, they're somehow connected with design. So like uh, each of these people in the PAM uh, is a designer, in, in different roles designers. So this is just like at least uh, what kind of, kind of design activity we've got. Uh, and it's not just the visual design or not just experience design, this is like all possible roles in design. Uh, recently we bought a couple really huge and face, famous design agency and uh, now we could provide 360 degree design as a design agency as well. And that, why that's important? Because uh, clients, they expect that uh, complexity, design complexity, interface complexity, uh, any kind of complexity uh, of our product uh, should be raised on high level. And from here, I'd like to pass my mic to Louisa. And Louisa share, start with some details about uh, experience designers, and after that uh, we go to Figma and some tricks uh, inside that. Louisa, please. Thank you, Pete. And it's uh, such a pleasure to be here among all of you. You know, as experienced designers, our work starts much earlier than any UI. Before we get to give you some requirements and design specifications, we have already probably done a lot of research on the domain of the product. We have done research on competitors, talks to users, talk to stakeholders, and all of that wireframing, testing, until we get to do the design that you receive. But today, instead of focusing on all of our long and heavy process, we will focus on the part where our collaboration starts, UI design. Not until recently were two separate parts of the product cycles. Designers doing God knows what crazy things, designing some things that probably will never see the light of day, and developers on their end working alone, probably unsure where the hell to put that button, 
and how round the corners should be. And the toughest part is that it's usually the product suffering. Similarly to how this draw, drawing continues from a very nice uh, horse bottom to a rough sketch. We had a few rough years. I remember years ago we used to send developers a flat PSD file and you would embark on a journey to understand it, doing some complex measurements and calculations to putting a finger to see how the spacing is look like and try to hide the distance. But for better or for worse, we were stuck together and we were forced to mend our relationship and try to find a way to collaborate better for the sake of the product. And we moved the industry forward. Because of our need, the industry needed to bring out solutions which will help us collaborate better and uh, provide more responsive and uh, intuitive ways for us to do together a work. Companies came out with solutions such as Adobe XD, InVision, Sketch, and the king for all of us, Figma. Today, my colleagues will share with you some interesting tips and tricks and why we think Figma is the king of all softwares. Firstly, we will start with Ila, who not until recently was just a front-end developer like you and he's been shifting between the industries quite a lot and now he's part of our team as a UX designer. He will demonstrate that our worlds are not so much far apart, actually they're quite uh, close together. Then Dima will share some of his exceptional UI skills and demonstrate how far we are coming to demonstrate better our ideas so that you can implement them more easily into your work. And last but not least, Sophie will share with you the power of prototyping and how we strive to be a better partner to developers and move the products further and bring a better service to all of the clients. I hope you enjoyed today's sneak peek into the design world. Ila, the floor is yours. Yeah, hello everyone. My name is Ilya and uh, Luisa mentioned that I am a UX UI designer. I personally still don't know who I am. Uh, my journey starts 25 years ago when I was in high school and it definitely was a prehistoric time for graphic user interface development. Uh, so at that time there were software developers which is clearly do code and graphic designer who draw images, I don't know. And all these dinosaurs observe how internet meteorite uh, fall down in front of them and change everything. Uh, graphic user interface browsers like Internet Explorer and Netscape Navigator brings JavaScript, HTML, CSS, different technologies which uh, uh, make human mesh and interactive graphically. And that was uh, game changer and I was so obsessed of this graphic interface so decided to di deep dive into it and connect with it my career my life and everything so uh, time goes by anyone know who is webmaster heard this term <laughs> no one else oh nice at least one person <laughs> so uh, this is a uh, jack of all tra trades and master of no of known. It was around 2005-2007, then uh, if you search for someone who can create a website or any kind of web application or graphic user interface, you just ask for webmaster, the person who can see administrate system. It's partly DevOps, partly backend developer, database developer, whatever, and of course a designer. Of course, graphic designers already exist, but they simply don't care what's happening on the internet, on this screen, or whatever. So, uh, if you would like to create user interface, you need to be, you, you had to be at least uh, partly developer. And interaction with designer pissed me off, really, because I, every day, uh, have to handle some stuff like uh, measuring pixels or make uh, flat pictures partly transparent and that was a mess. So uh, being senior software developer, I decided to switch to UX design and show everyone how things should to be done. And here we comes to another one phase of my career, like 
year 2013, I work in multinational, international, worldwide company. I call the UX UI designer and I work with mobile. Yeah, I was one of the first who work with uh, Android, for example, Android 1.6. Uh, I work in LG Electronics that time and uh, we create different interfaces. I work with desktop, work with uh, mm, web application also. Yeah, and uh, since then I stopped Blame Designer. There was just a lack of tools, lack of designer development communication. And the industry, the software industry, uh, front-end development, uh, pick, their, pick up their speed and designers just can't catch it up. So, uh, <clears throat> since that moment, I start to float from front-end development to UX design there and back, participate in different um, startups and still can't find my place there. I like user interface, really like, I would like to make it better to think about user, user experience, but we still can do nothing until such great tools as Sketch, Envision, Zeppelin, and Figma basically appears. And with the appearance of Figma, the communication between designer development comes to the next level. I can talk more about building UI kit and design system, how it should be, how it works. Um, yeah, I got experience. But I would like to be more specific and more practical and talk about some very interesting stuff uh, we have now and work with it. Uh, did you heard about atomic design? Some of it? Yeah, nice. More people. <laughs> yeah, so it's idea that was introduced in far 2014 by Brad, Fro Brad Frost and as developers I think it's natural for you to build your application a component based approach so uh, as in the, our universe everything creates uh, starts from the atoms uh, and the molecules consist of atoms and organisms consist of molecules and so on and so on up to some higher entities yeah and uh, Brad Frost uh, decide to formulate this idea to uh, designers that they can could organize the designs the same way and uh, pass it to developers the same way. It's very similar to how modern application um, build in the front end side. So uh, here you can see the um, atomic design approach to um, Instagram, right? So the atoms are icons or text or username. Uh, using these uh, atoms, we will build molecules, which is, uh, uh, creates like uh, bottom bar, top bar, content area. From the molecules, we can build organism. And using organism, we build template. And if we add content to that template, we finally get the uh, pages. <clears throat> okay, that's about atomic design. And what about our fellow developers? I noticed that you may be familiar with, with this approach, but uh, to be uh, more practically, anyone use Storybook? Oh, nice. Even more people. So Storybook is a great tool. It's not uh, trying to be a part of your application. It stands aside, but uh, it forms a, as an isolated approach to the components. So you develop a component in a, like a story. You create a dot story. Oh yeah, here it is. You create a dot story file which describe component and can develop it separately from your application. That's interesting. And uh, what's most interesting is provides uh, an ability to test components to make variations, to communicate with a designer and make design system the place where designer devel development developer actually met. So uh, you, you can't uh, force the developer to write documentation. It always fails. But if you make the, the process of development as a part of documentation, it works as a charm. Here's the example. You just create uh, stories in storybook and its document itself. And so you communicate with developer. Uh, why we need storybook? Because the variation of uh, components grows huge in big application especially. 
many colors, many states, different browsers, different view uh, ports and disabilities, uh, you need to test it. And you need to test it uh, aside of your application, not running each time all the content, all the application, just like isolated things. And here we come with atomic design. Atomic design and Figma uh, just work like hand in a glove. Uh, if you uh, hide the top bar of this application, you can't find the difference between Figma and Storybook. You can uh, handle the same structure of components, both in Figma and uh, Storybook. And that's wonderful uh, because, uh, for example, we got a Storybook plugin for Figma. You can add a link to your Storybook into component and see it in a pop-up, how it works live. And most wonderful thing that you can imp implement or add storybook functionality into your application any time of development. As soon as you find that you need some kind of better interaction between <coughs> designer and development, you can add storybook feature and yeah, you can start. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's live, it works in real life. I use it twice for the last two years in different stage of the project. Maybe the project lasts for one year, and then we decide to apply another design. And one developer joined the team, uh, installed Storybook, and we start to work together to improve new styling for existing components. And also, of course, uh, you got a Figma plugin for your Storybook. So you can review the design, you can add a link to the Figma design in your Storybook and review the actual state of design. So what I'm talking about, uh, what is Storybook actually? Storybook is a company sandbox and playground, source of truth and documentation, uh, a f live prototyping environment, testing platform, and design review tool. Uh, you can show this design to stakeholders using, using Storybook. It's whatever, but more important, it's a next level of collaboration between designers and developers. It's, you can count it as a, framework for collaboration. You start speaking the same language and design system becomes not just the way how designer provide design uh, to developer, but the point where the designer and developers met and work together. That's, that's the magic and you can, as I already said, you can implement it at any stage of your project. So, uh, yeah, what's in the end? In the end, I've ended up with the UX development because I love it, I like to do it, and I feel uh, less and less amount of obstacles which force me to move to front-end development. I can focus on design and collaborate effectively with any kind of designer using such a wonderful tools as, as Storybook and uh, Figma. And now Dmitry, my colleague, will tell you more about Figma and its techniques. Thank you. Thanks, Ilya. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Dmitry. Uh, I've been working in the fields of design for like 12 years, maybe. Uh, and uh, for the last five of them, I'm mostly involved uh, in uh, creating uh, complex uh, UI kits and uh, design systems. So, well, in APM, it's mostly about the uh, life science domain, luckily for me. Uh, so, uh, what I was going to speak about today a little bit is the quality of the mock ups we work on a daily basis and uh, later transfer to the development team. Uh, what I'm gonna be talking about, it's more like my personal approach. Uh, it's about the organization of uh, all the elements. Actually, that's what uh, Ilya also mentioned. It, it does involve uh, atomic design, uh, obviously. And uh, this approach, I try to spread it around uh, among my uh, colleagues. Uh, I just hope that uh, the developers also find that uh, useful and helpful. Uh, so uh, at this point, uh, yeah, actually uh, the example uh, I'm gonna talk about, uh, that's the real project from my past. Uh, uh, it's called Harvester and I've been working on this one uh, in uh, summer 2021. Uh, that was the period when Figma got a huge update. Uh, the main feature was called Variance, 
and uh, it uh, increased uh, the creativity basically the, which we can apply to the mock-ups a lot. Uh, so uh, I'll just show you how the UI kit actually looks. It might be cleaned up a little bit, but well, from the bird's view, those are all the elements that could ever be needful to create the website. It, it, it doesn't have any uh, ready-made pages, so those are the atoms and molecules and organisms, also that's what uh, Ilya mentioned. Uh, everything put together, but uh, the main feature in here is that uh, those are not just static objects uh, put all together at one page. Uh, so now if we switch to the prototype tab in here, what we can see are the tiny arrows connecting all the, all the elements uh, within uh, one frame. So basically just uh, to take a look at the example, well, let's say it's gonna be the toggle which is, which was somewhere here. That's uh, quite a mess in here. Uh, so uh, just to, to compare what it was before the variance uh, in Figma period and after that. So we all know how regular togglers work. It does have just these two states. It's uh, on and off. Uh, but if we just uh, put some efforts and spend some time uh, using the variance, we add four additional states uh, to this one and so the result is gonna be like a bit more fancy I'd say so it basically looks like this that's a huge toggler in here and uh, it works like this so just additional states and uh, yet so that's a single element so we can just copy that and paste into the mock-up uh, it's not six elements still it just means that the, all the animations are made uh, within uh, this frame in here and uh, uh, that's quite a easy example so uh, we can go further. Uh, there are some tricks that I still think well maybe I invented them who knows uh, I've never met I've never met them before anyway never mentioned before uh, so uh, there is uh, one uh, interesting trick uh, I do know that for the developers, it's quite easy to make the uh, hovering state, well, for example, with a button, when uh, some kind of uh, effects, uh, it just follows the cursor. So Figma has no functionality like this. Uh, it, was, it, it doesn't come from the box. Uh, but uh, I was thinking, so how can I recreate this one? Uh, it's actually took couple of weeks maybe, but uh, the point is that I do know that for developers that is quite easy. Uh, I was going just to show it uh, quickly how much effort it takes just to, to make it look almost the same, how it can be implemented in code, but uh, that's definitely not the way how you guys are gonna create this one. I'll just switch my mic for a second. Uh, could you please, is it on? Oh, that's cool. Uh, so the effects uh, I want to recreate is as easy as, I'm not gonna show you for now. Uh, so uh, basically that's the effect that's gonna be applied to the button and uh, just recreate it from scratch. So uh, what I want to see here is the, is the any object actually, it could be anything that basically follows the cursor in the prototype. That's the main goal in here. Uh, so what I came up with, we just have to create, that also includes variants, obviously. Uh, what we have to make here is just the creating the two frames uh, this could be uh, just, I don't pay attention much to the naming in here. And uh, basically that's the variant with the two, two states we have in here. Uh, 
Now I will name that. That's going to be like a normal state in here. And the hover one. Uh, so what we're going to do next, it's as easy as just putting uh, some circles inside these ones, colored with, uh, let's say, that's going to be green. And a small one goes inside the first state. Uh, it is centered. And the uh, next one, it's, uh, it's quite important at this point that it has the same name in here. It's going to be just an ellipse. And the second state in here is going to be way bigger, let's say, like this, this one. And with a blurred effect, obviously. Oh, I am almost there. Let's say, like this. That's going to be enough. Uh, so what the variants actually uh, provide us is the opportunity just to connect these two states with a single arrow in here. And the transaction, let's say, that's going to be while hovering with some random animation. That's, that's more than enough. Uh, actually, uh, this tool gives us the opportunity to change the animation whatever we want uh, just in, in this single component. And uh, later, it's going to be transferred to the uh, final result, obviously. Uh, just one more second. And we put the um, transparency to 0. And actually, we're done. Uh, so what we have to do next, uh, just the next step, we're copying this one. And uh, we're going to recreate like the background for the, is it there? Oh, I lost it. Uh, we're going to recreate the background for this huge button so that you could see it uh, on the screen. Uh, we uh, make the same size of this button. It's just going to be made with these uh, areas. So we're going to duplicate it like multiple times. Uh, it's, it's almost invisible in here, because uh, uh, there is actually the circle itself is, is invisible. And group it like this. So let's say that's the approximate area we now have. And we copy it inside the uh, prepared button, actually and center it like this. We're going to add some more. Uh, I hope it's quite clear what's uh, the main uh, point in here is that uh, it's, uh, it's quite complicated, actually. Uh, but the result is going to be like this. So we just copy it in here. And let's have a look. I hope that works. So, so when we hover the uh, cursor on a button, uh, we get the effect that probably the guys from Figma also don't know that it exists in their product. I, I still hope so. Uh, that's uh, quite, uh, quite an easy one. Uh, and as far as I know, I, I am concerned about this one. Uh, it's not going to work the same in code. That's what I think. But uh, actually, the question is, what's that all for? Uh, well, first of all, uh, uh, well, personally, for me, I just don't want to work m much with the uh, wireframes. I, I do want to get the full, full picture of the website even before it goes to the development, like long before the development stage. Uh, all the mockups. Uh, uh, could be uh, connected, uh, the pages could be connected with the prototypes. That's what the next feature is going to be about. And uh, uh, so we just get the full impression, the stakeholders get the full impression of the website that is not in the development yet. And uh, the second thing, which is maybe even more important, uh, is that. Uh, we can switch to code at this point. So uh, all the arrows that are shown here, they do have uh, those uh, settings with uh, 
uh, timing, so uh, I might set it like to 50 milliseconds and some transaction back is gonna be like 120 milliseconds and at some point it sometimes makes sense and uh, it's all visible in Figma here, so even if it's not the uh, editing rights for the development team for this uh, mock-up, uh, it's uh, still all visible in the inspect tab in here, so all the easings, all the timings, the sizing, si uh, sizes and the colors obviously. Uh, so the point of all that is just to provide the most uh, full information for the development team and at that point uh, this uh, project it was like a story of a success I'd say uh, so the website did went live and uh, I was very pleasantly surprised that uh, basically there were, were not so many questions from the development team so it looked like I gave them all at once and uh, even though we had a couple of uh, design review uh, sessions uh, there was not that much to comment from my side so I guess that's the most important thing in here so uh, just speaking shortly the better the quality of the mock-ups the more they are uh, thoughtful in every single detail uh, it's uh, the better for everyone that's what I think. And uh, I guess that's it from my side. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Uh, I'll pass my mic to my colleague, Sophia. She'll continue the topic of the prototyping now. I would like the normal one. <laughs> so, hello, guys. Uh, today I'm going to speak about the power of prototype. And one of our favorite quotes from Uncle Ben, with great power comes great responsibility. So, I think this is a very familiar situation to a lot of us, especially when it comes to developing a whole product. You have, the QA has gone through the whole thing and they're somewhere crying in the corner you have the designers screaming and you have the stakeholders telling you that for some reason it doesn't look the same as the designs that they have seen. And from, from everything that we know, everyone in this picture has done uh, their job correctly. What basically comes down to it is communication be between the design team and between the developers. And in order to, for us to have a better communication and make sure that the whole process goes smoothly, we have started creating um, basically uh, full-fledged prototypes that simulate as close as possible uh, the real product. So today I'm going to showcase you one such prototype. It's relatively simple, but to get into the meat of it, while Dima showed you mostly the... I'm sorry. <laughs> Well, Dima showed you mostly the sophisticated um, animations that go into a prototype. I'm going to give you a sneak peek of what a full one looks. So this is something that's going to have a lot of micro interactions in it, same as, similar to the ones that Dima showed, but they all work together to provide a very smooth experience for users, for stakeholders, and for developments, developers to go through and basically have an idea of how the end product should look. So, as we can see, we're just going to have a quick little look around at this app. And I would like to to ask you guys actually, how many of you have ever received a complete prototype and has the designer ever told you how to use it most efficiently? Anyone? No one? Okay. So, thanks to Figma, as Dima mentioned actually, to a big part of it, 
prototypes, if you get a Figma file from a designer, you can actually go and see all the connections, and these connections probably mean nothing to you, but that's okay. Because there's this handy little tab here called in inspect, and this is where you, if you click on any component or module of this prototype, you can actually see the code at the very bottom here. And you can switch through different views. You can have CSS, iOS, Android, and you can do this for every single piece of this working prototype, even fonts. So what we hope that technologies will like these would um, achieve is that you'll be able to perform your job a lot faster, a lot smoother, and this will strengthen our collaboration between UX and design. So yeah. Thank you. And now I'm gonna give the word to Louisa, I believe. Thank you, Sophie. All of these speeches and what we were trying to achieve today was to show you that we're trying our best to move the industry together with you forward and be a better partner so that we can produce better quality uh, products, we can provide a better service, and we can move the future together in the right way. Thank you for all of your attention. If you guys have any questions, feel free to ask them now for any of the speeches. No one? <laughs> all right, well, thank you guys very much for all of your attention, and uh, it was nice seeing you. <laughs>